Yo, yo, welcome back. Today's episode is sponsored by PCBWay. Uh, PCBWay is a great company that designs and develops PCBs. Uh, they can take things from your imagination, your drawings, your KCADs, your schematics, your BOMs, and they can then go and create an actual tangible PCB. It also offers a great 3D printing service as well as CNC milling, uh, sheet metal cutting, and a variety of other services that they offer. So if you have not heard PCBWay, definitely go check them out. They are worth the look at, and I will put a link in the description below for a coupon to save you some dollars off your first order. And I want to say thank you, PCBWay, for always being a sponsor of this channel. I greatly appreciate it. So today we are looking at the Nano VNA. This is the FV3. This was sent to me by Open Source SCR Labs. Um, not really do, to do a review on, but mostly so I can use it for doing antenna tuning and kind of antenna analysis, really. But I had somebody comment on a video a while back when I showcased the Carpeter ADV with the GNSS LoRa module. And the stock antenna that comes on this module is an 868 frequency. And if you didn't see my video, I modded my board here to receive the appropriate SMA female adapter instead of the SMA RP adapter, which is useless in my opinion. With that one, I desoldered the SMA RP and then soldered in the appropriate SMA uh, female there. That was the fix. I did let M5 stack know about my findings and they said that they were gonna be looking into that to possibly change that to the appropriate SMA for future modules coming out. In that video, somebody did ask about the 868 and how it functions with, with Meshtastic uh, in the US particularly, because in the US, we uh, most of our Meshtastic stuff is on 906.875. Meshtastic is in this realm of, you know, roughly 850 to 950 megahertz. It's kind of the spectrum. Uh, in the UK and, you know, that side of the world, they run most of 868. In the US, we run on the 900 to 915 area. Uh, on Meshtastic, your general communication or your general comms channel, that is going to be tuned to 906.875 whenever you set it up. If you're having issues receiving signals, you can go in there and manually actually adjust that frequency there to go to 906.875. If you're having issues receiving messages and you're wondering why that could be an issue. We're going to be looking at antennas today and we're going to be using the nano VNA here to kind of analyze particular antennas. So one, like I said, is the 868 that was sent with the Carpeter ADV. Uh, then I have this uh, kind of little mini whip one that I got from Amazon. These are in a two pack. Uh, that's a 915. And then I also got this, I think this is a six DVI antenna that I mostly use for like home based uh, routers or repeaters, and they offer a little bit more DBIs. Go ahead and dive into this. So I already calibrated and tuned the Nano VNA. And if you haven't seen or you don't know what that really entails, I would definitely definitely recommend just kind of Googling Nano VNA calibration. Down here I am in my nine. I kind of have it set to 800. I'm gonna probably move that up actually to 850 uh, megahertz. And then I'm gonna go all the way up to, to we're gonna say 980 megahertz. See here that my SWR is kind of flat across the top. Uh, I am receiving some minimal kind of interference here at a 0.3. Uh, so that might have an effect of the true readings, but we're going to go with it. And then, like I said, I already calibrated this. The calibration is really just using these little uh, kind of calibration, little screw on SMA adapters here. And then you calibrate it through the actual nano VNA. You can do it. Uh, you're going to do an open, a close, and then a load. I want to start with the 868 antenna here. Nano VNA has the appropriate SMA female. I do have to have an adapter on here to go from the RP or from the SMA RP to the uh, SMA male there. I couldn't calibrate that with this on because I don't have a conversion for that, but we're just gonna go with it. You can see there that we have a pretty decent little curve right here at the bottom. And I'm also gonna move some things around and kind of minimize interference because you can see here that just my hand being in, in the way here is causing some kind of interference. Uh, and so I wanted to have this to try to be as true as possible. And I would like to note as well that if you're gonna change the orientation of this, uh, you will see here that the little uh, V on the graph actually kind of goes up or down depending on the orientation. So orientation of the antennas kind of matters to an extent. And I could just do this, but you see here how much it jacks up that actual reading. We're just gonna 
take our little marker here and we're gonna go down and I wanna go down here and see where this antenna is actually tuned to. So the sticker said 868, but we are already going down, down, down and we're getting close to 880-ish. The sweet spot roughly before it starts going up again is gonna be 885.620 for this antenna. Uh, we're looking at a 1.23 on the SWR there. Decent antenna, uh, it's got a great sweep to it. And this is the stock antenna that comes with your card Peter ADV. Um, so it's gonna be, of course, dealer's choice if you want to upgrade to another antenna or not. And again, this is all gonna be kind of uh, your personal preferences of what you want to do with an antenna. Uh, so again, dealer's choice. Next, we're gonna go with this little whip from Amazon. And I'll put a link in the description below for all these. Uh, some of them may be affiliated links, just FYI. Uh, so let's go ahead and hit up this 915 one right here. And then we're gonna just let that guy lay. Now, this guy gives us a really weird looking graph here. And now that's not to say that this antenna is not good for mesh tacit, because if you go back and watch my video on the mesh technology nodes, I actually use this antenna as well as a few others that I'm gonna showcase here, and they actually performed really, really well. Just kind of take some of this as with a grain of salt. And out of curiosity, I'm just gonna go and up this to one gig. And I'm going to go ahead and take this down to 800 megahertz there. That kind of guidance our spectrum a tad bit. It is saying that this antenna is kind of the sweet spot there is at that 876 megahertz. And then again, we're looking at that 1.3-ish SWR there right here. Next, we're going to go to this kind of fixed antenna. Uh, this little beefy guy here from Amazon, like I said. I think these come in a two-pack as well. I think these were three DBI uh so let's just throw him on there. All right, there we have a really deep sweep right there. Now if we go down there, oh, wrong way. You see how just having my hand in the way there kind of threw that off. But right about there, we're looking at an 8.6 on the sweet spot uh, for the megahertz that this guy's tuned to. And then we are at a 1.0 SWR. Fairly, fairly good antenna there. And again, you're, you're seeing that a lot of these antennas are not really tuned to that 900 range, but that mesh tastic is just in this broad area from that 860-ish, like I said, to that 950-ish. Um, but that these antennas obviously here in the U.S. perform fairly well. Uh, I know that from line of sight, I have gotten seven miles uh, with these antennas. Testing had done years back, so they are great antennas. That is that antenna. We're going to go to this little nubby guy here that uh, shows this is a GRA SCH32. It says that it's, it's a tri-band, so 144, uh, 430, and then 900. I did test this guy out in my video for the mesh technology little nodes, and it performed decent. It wasn't the best antenna. Now, you're seeing here that this guy's not even registering at all, but I know that if I do grab it like this, there is a little sweet spot here that whenever I grab this antenna and I kind of create a ground plane, is that then we can see that this antenna actually does have. And this guy is really actually in that 930 range. But again, you have to kind of use your body as a ground plane. So not the most ideal situation, but if you do like the short little nubby antennas and you maybe have a few of these lying on hand, uh, then these are decent antennas as well. And if you're just kind of really going from like short range node to nodes, like roughly a mile maybe, or if you have a lot of nodes and repeaters in your area to then bounce that around, then you'd be okay with a little guy like this. Uh, not the best antenna there. And then let's go ahead and check out the little stock antenna here. These come with like almost all of your nodes and stuff that you're gonna get. The real basic little guys here. Yeah, he's got a decent little sweep to him. Uh, it looks like he's gonna be down in the 900 range. He's in that 8. 80, we're just gonna call it around 890-ish is where that guy's tuned to. I know for a fact that whenever I use these antennas node to node, uh, they perform fairly well, quarter mile, half a mile maybe. Uh, some of you guys may have better reports than that. And I guess if you guys were curious about a telescopic antenna, maybe some of you wanted to try one of these out for a mesh tastic and you have quite a few lying around, we can see how this guy's gonna perform. And then we could also start expanding this now, usually mesh testing antennas are short. Start collapsing this in order to possibly see where this antenna would be semi-resonant at for that frequency. So right, right about there, actually. So I went one, two, three, four, five and a half units up, and that kind of gave us a decent little sweep. And of course, when I put it down and changed, there we go. So if I turn that guy up, 
he actually looks really well. Let's go down. He might be just in that sweet spot. He's in that sweet spot of right in that sweet spot of 913 uh, with a 1.4 uh, SWR there. So not bad at all. And we could also try out one of these Diamond SRH 805 S's. This is a tri band as well for the 144, the 430, and the 12 megahertz range. This is a wide band coverage, like I said, wide band tri band. So let's throw this guy on there and see what we get. And we get nothing. So if I do create a ground plane, so it looks like these shorter antennas definitely need a ground plane of sorts. Again, touching the antenna, holding it. That looks pretty sweet, honestly. That's right at the 907.200 uh, megahertz range at a 1.28 SWR. So fairly decent antenna if you're going to be holding it. Again, not the best option or choice to do, but it is there. And again, this is not going to be every antenna because every antenna, although they try to design them as closely as possible, all antennas are really made different. They're made equally, but how they're going to function is made different. So it's best to kind of have a tool like a nano VNA um, or some kind of SWR meter to kind of gauge and see how well these antennas really perform. Now for mesh tastic, this may not be anything special or this may not be really needed because of, of how wide it can receive and transmit on. Uh, but if you're looking at like really fine tuning some stuff, then a nano VNA is definitely gonna be worth your investment to uh, kind of get into the antenna world and antenna theory. So, uh, but yeah, that's pretty much it that I have for you today. I appreciate you guys watching. Uh, thank you for your time as always. Like, subscribe, do all that fun stuff, and I will see you guys in the next video.